We have our own organizer giving a talk on <laughs> Talos OS. This is going to be last talk to, for today. Um, after this, uh, we'll have uh, wristbands uh, distributed outside, so you can collect those. You all know, my name is Sayam, and this is about me. Let's get directly into the, into the talk stuff. Uh, so basically what happens is we have moved, so I'll give you just an overview first. Uh, with respect to every shift that we are going through, there are new set of challenges that come uh, with any change that we go through. So we, ha we were going from monolithic, obviously monolithic apps. Um, traditionally, we ordered the hardware, configured the hardware, and then you configure the OS, then you configure and deploy the application, and then you have to maintain the application. Uh, then from that, we moved into the world of microservices, where you have you know, a choice of language, easy to scale, API-driven approach. Um, you have, it's cloud native, and then we moved to the containers and Kubernetes ecosystem, because even microservices, when you are deploying it, uh, you know, n number of microservices across different environments, production, uh, staging, de uh, development, and then you need the orchestrator for that, so that is Kubernetes, which have become de facto. We have heard all, that, all those talks as well. So current flow um, that many organizations are following is, uh, either we have a VM, bare metal, that this was the self-managed ones. Uh, then we install the host operating system, and we are using the same operating systems that we have been using from years, like Ubuntu, CentOS, and stuff like that. Uh, and we are installing Kubernetes on top of that, and then we deploy our uh, microservice. So when we talk about that operating system layer, we are still managing, like it's, again, difficult to manage the patches because there are vulnerabilities, and people talk these days a lot about the security vulnerabilities. So you have, you have to have the, so those secure patch updates, OS version, which OS version you are using from CentOS, from Ubuntu, then the version compatibility between that. Even in different cloud providers, when you have the same set of images, they have kind of different flavor that they provide, even if they say that it is the same one. So uh, your packages still might differ over there. So the challenge is, in the end, if we only want the Kubernetes cluster, then why we are uh, we want the whole big operating system that is there? Why there are like why we need why we need the additional set of binaries, additional set of libraries that are that are there when we just in the end need the uh, Kubernetes cluster to deploy our application? So our main goal should be like uh, we should we are not going down the layer uh, for from the operating system point of view. Uh, when we only need Kubelet and obviously few few other binaries that are needed to run the, uh, the Kubernetes. And again, OS upgrades and security patches are something which is a challenging, and OS version inconsistency that I just explained with different cloud vendors having same um, OS but different set of versions. So that is where something uh, Talos comes in. So Talos is an operating system that is built for Kubernetes. So the sole purpose of Talos is to give you a Kubernetes cluster, nothing else to do. You cannot SSH into that, so that itself is a, is a huge security benefit that you get. So you cannot SSH into um, the machine that has Talos. That is interesting, and that is very good, because you get no SSH access. What people usually do is people create the clusters, and then they have SSH, and then they install tools to record the sessions to see what went wrong, when it went wrong, and all those things. So all those things will be eliminated uh, automatically when you have no SSH access. Everything is API driven, so it's, it's a YAML file, uh, and you can interact to the Talos cluster using that API file. Like, for example, if you need um, another network, if you need to configure the kubelet parameters, if you need to upgrade, upgrade automatically there's a command, but still, if you need to do it manually, you can configure the file and you can apply that, and you'll get the um, Talos cluster over there. Um, atomic upgrades, so it's, it's not like something fails so some part is upgraded and some is not. So either it upgrades or it doesn't upgrade. So it's, it's like atomic upgrade. Image based, um, so it's the same image that will be running in the same way across the cloud providers, across any cloud providers. And the user experience, again, going to the Kubernetes way, it's RBAC enabled. Uh, so you have, uh, whenever there's a new user, you can do it via the RBAC. So basically following the same Kubernetes native approach and the sole purpose of giving the uh, cluster to the user, bringing that power of controllers that Kubernetes is having uh, to the OS layer is what Talos gives you. 
So it has a declarative YAML file. Uh, you can choose the CNI. Uh, you can customize that in the YAML file. You can add extra flags in the YAML file. Uh, you can apply additional YAML files onto the cluster that you want to do while creating the cluster. Um, so only slash var is writable. Rest all is read only. Even that is uh, not completely writable. There is some extra mounting that is done. So um, for example, if, if you if you have set up Kubernetes, you know like you have to set up some of the parameters like slash etc slash hosts. So all those things are there. So due to that, there is one uh, directory which is writable via mounting. Then uh, you can boot up Talox. You, you can use uh, Pixie booting and you can use all those things. Um, it reduces the number of CVEs because you don't SSH. The upgrades are atomic, so that, that is there. And there are limited binaries, so you don't have to care about all the other binaries. Yeah, so that's what it, it's not for generic container, it only runs Kubernetes, that's what it is. And the controllers have worked really well for application, Telos is bringing the same power to OS. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want a deep dive, you can go to my YouTube channel and watch the detailed video with demo, how to do that. Thank you. Uh -huh.